Because God is good, isn't he? Hallelujah. And I'm ready, man. I got my Snoopy and Tweety socks on. So, <laughs> Hallelujah. So the first scripture we're going to read is in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 57. And it starts out exciting. Hallelujah. Am I sounding okay? Hallelujah. Verse 51 goes, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed, all changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to that day. And as you see our world today, what's going on, it seems like it's closer than it's ever been before. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which give us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We are victorious, though it may not seem at times, doesn't it? We're living and witnessing a time that may have never happened in history before. Depression, or maybe more appropriate, desperation, is something we see everywhere, isn't it? In the past two years, I looked it up and said two, two years ago, starting last month, was when the lockdowns started in this country. And our country has been changed, polarized since that day ever since. And, hey, what's happening this coming week? A lot of the mandates are finally disappearing. Praise God. Give him the glory for that. Hallelujah. I'm glad for that. So in those two years, we have been forced to do a lot of things that were frustrating we couldn't have family events, could we? You had to limit the number or limit it to just your household. You couldn't have your grandpa and grandma. If your grandparents or someone was sick in the hospital, you couldn't visit them. Desperate times. You have to, some, some lost their jobs, right? Some of the businesses closed and they still haven't reopened. And the ones that did can't find supplies or materials to do the business. They wait. Some, some of the stuff's like a, I think some windows are like a year down, aren't they, Dave? Windows are bad, and, and that's where the business he works in. It's affecting him. So it's tough out there, isn't it? Praise God for some of us that need soy sauce, right, brother? <laughs> you never. <laughs> yeah, see, it's, it's crazy. Feast or famine is pretty much it in our country, isn't it? So, so that's the kind of depressing. For those that have lost their jobs or couldn't work, it's rough. And they're worried about how to feed their family and you know, how to pay their bills and stuff like that. The kids, for a time, had to, work, had to go to school from home. They had a, what they call a virtual school, wasn't it? And now the evidence is certainly showing how much damage that did to the kids that had to go through that. And mass mandates and all that stuff, again, and, I don't know what your position is and that stuff is, but I'm thanking God that it's, it's ending. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. We were even told we couldn't gather together and worship. Something that pretty much never happened in this country before. It used to be when we had tragedies or things going on that the government would ask the church to get together and pray. This one, they're telling you, no. Don't gather together. Do it virtually if you, at best. And we did that for a short time, and it was definitely different, wasn't it? The worship team was up here by himself, and uh, I was here by myself. Huh? <laughs> Just like. Uh-huh. <laughs> <Ben? Shh. Swap. laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it was a rough time, and we are witnessing this country being divided like I never thought it would ever be before, would it? You know, it used to be just because of the color of your skin divided us. But now it's what you believe in really divides us. You know, 
I'm on Facebook several times, and people kind of know my political views and some of my views on some other things. And, you know, I get some negative comments, but there are some other news sources that I go out there and I write stuff on there, and it is just as unbelievable how attacked you get. And it's not nice. There's even people that wish you would die because of the position you held. I would have never have thought that. What happened to the time that you had a freedom to say what you um, needed to say, and I would fight for that freedom for you to say it. It's not like that anymore. It's a hostile, different world. God, uh, I, with these kids growing up today, whew, pray for our children. Hallelujah. So to talk about victory when we have all that going on doesn't seem very appropriate, doesn't it, for our time? Yeah, it's definitely what we need today, isn't it? Victory, the meaning of it, means the overcoming of an enemy or antagonist. Achievement of mastery or success in a struggle or an endeavor against odds or difficulties. First Peter 5, 8 tells us this about who our adversary is. And many of you know um, who it is. It says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion. Walking about, seeking whom he may devour. His job is to destroy. And his main goal is to destroy the church. And destroy the people that love God and are willing to serve him and tell others about him. He doesn't like us. We got the target on our back and a bullseye that he's thinking to destroy. And he's very good at it. He's had 6,000 years to practice, hasn't he? At the beginning of time, at the beginning of the fall of man, he's been there seeking to destroy God's word and the promises God had for his people. Now, listen, we all have struggles, as I think they are, if you're breathing. Is everybody breathing here this morning? <laughs> if you are, you have struggles. I think Ken Ham put it, not Ken Ham, uh, Ken Davis put it the best. Is there only two people that in this world that don't have problems. One is in the front of the church in a coffin, and the other one's in a padded room bouncing off the walls. I have no problems. <laughs> they're delusional. They're just thinking, they don't see the problems because their mind is gone. But we all have struggles in life. I have struggles in my life. It seems like sometimes every day is a struggle sometimes. You now, some of us may be going through something right now, aren't they? There's no sugar coat it. This world is not a friendly place. Not, it, not only unfriendly for the believers, but unfriendly for the unbelievers, isn't it? That's why I always say, it. I don't know how you can get through this life, this world, without having Jesus. Man, I'd have been six feet under long ago if it wasn't for Jesus in my life. And to him gets the victory. I can take no glory in what I'm doing. It may be see, seem easy for us to say that trust Jesus when somebody's going through an issue, isn't it? Tomorrow will be better. Is it? I think sometimes we do the most damage to people. We get our most scars, our most wounds, our biggest wounds are in the church. When people try it. You know, I'm a pastor, and, and it took me a long time to realize this, that I can't fix everything. I used to think when somebody had a problem, right away it's like, well, how am I going to fix it? You know, I have come to the realization that I can't always fix it. I can't. I don't have that ability. I ain't God. So when we stand up and say, oh, this is going to happen, you know, this is difficult. You know, we all have faith and we all believe God's word is true. But something we we be careful about how we Say things, because they can hurt. You know, I got wounds from my daughter. You know, the, bit, the worst time through that time is when people would say, it's going to be all right. I believe your daughter's going to be healed. And I knew it wasn't going to happen. And those wounds are still there. Hallelujah. I appreciate the prayers. But those wounds will never be gone completely. Those scars, I'd probably look forward to scars. 
Because that shows that something has covered those wounds, but those wounds are, are there. Hallelujah. Listen to Paul in 2 Corinthians 11, 24, 30. And this will cheer you up like nothing else. Hallelujah. Paul didn't always have a, the best walk, with, walk in this world, did he? Things that weren't always rosy. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 24, 30, it tells us this. He's telling a relating of a kind of his life story in a short synopsis in a couple of verses here. Of the Jews, five times were received, 40 stripes, say one. Woo! I am, that's great, isn't it? Thrice I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A day and a day and a half been in a deep. Oh, wait a minute. If somebody had quoted me script, these scriptures when I was coming to the Lord, I would have said, I don't, <laughs> I don't know if I want any participation in that type of faith that things, are, things aren't always rosy. Oh, weren't, you, weren't many of us told that? You come to Christ, everything's going to be bad. Everything's going to be good. You'll never have a mosquito bite again. You'll never have a flat tire again. You'll never get cut off driving doesn't happen, does it? The rain falls on the just and the unjust, the Bible declares to us. Hallelujah. So thrice, he was beaten with, with rods. Once I was stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day, and I have been in the deep. And journeyings often, and peril, perils of waters, and perils of robbers, and perils by my own countrymen, and perils by the heathen. And perils in the city, and perils in the wilderness, and perils in the sea, and perils among false witness. He had a couple of perils, didn't he? False brethren. And weariness, and painfulness, and watchings often, and hunger, and thirst, and fastings often, and cold, and nakedness. Boy, oh, I want to be a Christian. Besides those things that are without, that which come upon me daily. And we had all this stuff going on, and what, what was his, probably his biggest gripe? The care of all the churches. Let's read some of the epistles. He struggled with people. It's easy to be a Christian if you don't have people around you. It's easy being a pastor if nobody's in the crowd. Right, Dave? Need a call to help. Commune. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where was I? Verse 30. Point nine, who is weak, and I am not weak? Who is offended, and I burn not? If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern my infirmities. Boy, that's peachy, isn't it? That's a victorious set of verses, isn't there? Wow, look at my life. You want to be an apostle? I don't know if I'd ever want to be an apostle. All the apostles except one died not too glamorous death. Bartholomew, I think, was flayed, wasn't he? Can you imagine that? And the skin torn from your body until you finally gave up the spirit, the breath in you. But the same Paul that talks about here wrote this in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 through 21. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in all the church by Jesus Christ throughout the ages, world without end. Amen. So even in all his struggles and all the things that went through his life, he eventually was beheaded. He still would glorify God and acknowledge God as a strength to keep him going forward. We must do that. Like I said, without Christ, I am nothing. Without Christ, I would have gave it up a long time ago. But because of his victory over death and hell, I have the promise to come. Now, our life is relatively short. We think it's, you know, I'm, I'm 63. Really? <laughs> so you get our age, you forget how old you are. <laughs> Hallelujah. Right, D? Just kidding. Um, <laughs> Bucket didn't pick on you, Wayne. Hallelujah. So, <laughs> and, 
And you think, you think I lived a long life, but you look in, in, the, in the eternity of things, it's very short, isn't it? And I know I've had some struggles and low points in my life and things, and things I, I really struggle with, and there are times I seemed hopeless. I don't know. Praise God if you've never been there. Whew, you're probably in that four by four room with the padded walls. Hallelujah. It seems like the world and even the church keep telling us that we just need to be a good loser. You're going to lose. You're going to have problems. So why don't you just be a good loser? I will tell you right out, I'm not a good loser. I don't like losing in anything. I'll, I'll be a good sport about it, but deep down I'm saying, you know, that's my wife. We play, play cards once in a while, and every time she wins, I say, she cheated. That's the only way, you, or I let you win. Huh? Oh, yeah. Who? Yeah, not me, no. But I, 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 don't, I don't believe in cheating. I don't, I don't cheat to win, but I, I love to win. Oh, even my uh, golfing buddy, you know, he's quite a bit younger than me, and he's tall and lean and strong, and it sometimes takes me two shots to get to his one shot because he can drive that ball so far. But each time I'm out there, I'm looking to beat him. <laughs> I haven't yet. I've come close a couple of times, and one of these times when I beat him, and, and he, I'm going to be carrying that trophy. Hallelujah. So victory sometimes seems beyond our reach, doesn't it? But think about where you came from. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 9 through 11, it reminds us how terrible we once were without Christ. It says, Know ye not that the unrighteousness shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor infeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, or, nor covetousness, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. In this room, there were some of us, I was, I, I was an alcoholic. Well, I could say I was an alcoholic. There's people that had side of drug overdoses. Brother Mike. Bob, they've all had struggles in their lives. You would see them up here. You know, I, there's nothing makes me more proud than see Brother Mike or Brother Bob up here preach, sharing the Word of God, and, know, and I know what their past was. I know the struggle. You would never have thought that of me either. I had a speech impediment. I still struggle with certain words. But that doesn't stop me. I'll try to say them, and I'll look to my wife a lot of times, and she'll help me pronounce them. Right, baby? Eighteen years tomorrow we'll be married, so <laughs> praise God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified. But ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God, our God. That is the victory, to know what we once were and now who we are in Christ Jesus. We were nothing. We were destined. It said right in the beginning, know ye not that ye shall not inherit the kingdom of God? We, didn't, we don't deserve heaven. But because Jesus' love for us, we have been made away. I'm one that I can't stand before you and claim that every battle that I've gone through or will be going through in the future that I went through with a measure of grace and a positive attitude. But I know it does get better. That I bet get better at accepting those things. I've been crushed emotionally as well as spiritually. When my daughter died, I, my, I, I admit so I was ready to walk away from everything. It was a crush that I could never imagine would happen. I pray it never happens to anybody. It's the worst thing that a father can go through. 
I felt abandoned. And like the man who fell off the cliff, remember the story? The man who fell off the cliff, and he's hanging on to the one little branch hanging there. And he's crying out, saying, Lord, save me. Someone save me. Then he hears the voice saying, let go. Is anybody else up there? That's the attitude we have sometimes. Remember the bumper sticker, let go, let God? Let God, let go. What was it? Let go. Let go, God. That was a good message. I liked seeing that. And that's pretty much it. When we hold on to things, it can tear us up, and it can drive us away from the church, others, our family, our members. I know um, when my daughter got cancer the first time when she was an infant, how many, you know, and then that's what turned me to God. But I remember hearing people saying, huh, what kind of God is that? that would allow a baby to get cancer. But praise God, God healed her. And I had 37 years to spend with her. And I cherish every one of us. I can't say I was like Job when I was going through those struggles. Remember Job says, what do you say? I, I'm, huh? Yeah, naked I came in the world, naked I'll go out, and I will never, I will not curse God. I can't, I'm being honest, I can't say that. I was mad at God for a period of time. But I know the Bible says in Romans, all things work together to them. They'll love God and are calling to, calling to his purpose. And I believe he's still using those instances in my, to grow me. When Russ passed away, now Tom passed away last year, it's like, Wow. We can sometimes question who God is and what kind of God we are. He is. But they, they were saved. They were repented of their sins. They were baptized in his wonderful name. They had the baptism of the Holy Ghost in them. There is no more pain or suffering where they are now. And one day we get to go see them. Whoo, what a glorious day. Where else could I go, though, during those struggles? Where could I go? There's a song, where could I go but to the Lord? In John chapter 6, 67 through 69, when Jesus sometimes preached and made people unhappy, they didn't like what he said. Just like when we say things, people don't like some of the things we say they are. So... Because of what Jesus was saying, the people said, uh, a lot of people got up and just left, left following Christ. And, and in this instance, Jesus turns to his apostles and asks the question. In verse 67, it says, Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Who has the words of eternal life? And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's the moment we need to come to when we're struggling through things. And where can I go? Go back out in the world? Man, and I was miserable out there in the first place. Why would I want to go back to that stuff? So there's only one person I could turn to. Jesus Christ. There have been times that through tears I have gone to the Lord. There's many times I, I'm struggling, I'll come to a church or even at home, just kneel down, and I don't have even the words to say. And I just cry out to God and start telling him, I still love, I love you. No matter what. I made a promise a long time ago. I always have been good at my promises, but that's one promise I intend to keep, that I'll serve the Lord all my life. And I've seen many people come and go, but we're still here. Hallelujah. First Peter 5, chapter 10 and 11. It says, But the grace of 
God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while. So our lives are just short. He never promised us a rose garden. He actually told us, in this world you will have trouble. Right, Dana? And I say, amen. In this world I've seen trouble. Hallelujah. Through, I got lost. 10 through 11. Hallelujah. Right? Christ, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish strength, and settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Whoever I am in Christ, as I stand before you, Lord, victorious, is because of him. It's nothing I can claim. We need to surrender and begin to praise him in our struggles. Is it easy? Absolutely not. And we as brothers and sisters need to stand. I was going to show this earlier, and I forgot. You know, this, this shirt, you know, I, I said sometimes we are, you know, we are fixers, and so we try to say things and come up with things that try to help somebody. But sometimes that's not what you want to hear. I didn't want to hear, oh, everything is going to be good. It's still not good. But I got this shirt a while ago. It says, when you can't look on the bright side, I will sit with you in the dark. That's the best thing we can do as brothers and sisters when we know someone is struggling is just sit by them. You don't have to say anything. Just tell them you love them. And you're there for them. I can't, the struggles I know some people are going through, I can't, I don't understand, I can't understand them because I'm not in their place. I haven't worn their moccasins. You know, Jeff going through the MS. I don't understand the pain and the things he's going through. But Jeff, I'm there for you, praying. I don't have the word. You know, I pray God heals you. But it's God. He's God. First Samuel 30 and 6. It was David one time when he was out fighting doing work for the Lord. And the Amalekites came and captured all the military or the uh, people with them, the families, the wives, the children, and took them away. And that didn't make them very happen, happy. So in 1 Samuel 30, verse 6, it talks about that instance. And it had taken even David's wives. And David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and for his daughters. But this is what we must do. But David encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. We need that. We need to. I have to answer for everything I do. And sometimes people will say things or, or they don't have the words to say. If you haven't experienced what I have, have experience, how much could you know? Another one in my uh, chaplain training, one of the things they always tell us is never go to a situation and say, I know how you feel. If you've gone through the same type of thing. Because we don't. Everybody reacts differently. I'm you know, maybe a little more sensitive, right, to what s some people say or, or my feelings in that. Yeah, yeah that's, that's this big five foot. 10 inch, 240 pound well, guy of muscle and steel. Yes, I'm sensitive. I've cried a lot over the last couple of years. Hallelujah. Not because I'm a sissy. <laughs> because of the things I've gone through. I, I, I have more um compassion, I guess, for people that I ever had before. And a lot of times, if you notice, I'll text you or, or send a memo out there, and that's because I'm thinking of you. God has placed you on my heart. And I'm concerned. And a lot of times you write back, I'm doing good, but something tells me you're not. Don't be afraid to share that. So victory, 
What is your most ultimate victory? Well, one day we're going to be with Jesus, right? He's going to come, come and have us come in and enter in, that good and faithful servant. But in Revelation chapter 1, Jesus telling him about himself, who he is. Here's John before him. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and death. What greater victory is there? Jesus, when all hope was lost, man, I, I'm glad I wasn't there. But sometimes I wish I was there to see what was going on. And then to witness, can you miss, witness the resurrection of Jesus Christ? What an awesome story, a powerful event that happened in our 2,000 years ago. But God is good, isn't he? And we can stand victorious because of what he did. As the worship team comes on up, hallelujah. I won't take five minutes like Bob always says, hallelujah. But praise God. But we have to be, it's not a, it's not a, a journey that's for the weak, is it? No, sir. No, sir. There's going to be trials, but, but I'm victorious in Christ Jesus. I always will. And I'm joyful because of that. Even the struggles, they aren't fun to go to. Oof. And so they said some of those wounds will be there forever, but I still have the joy of the Holy Ghost in me, joy of, of God in me. And that's a testimony of his power and his love. Hallelujah. Now, I love him, and I need him so much. And you know what? He loves you. And he also needs you to be in the kingdom. Can you imagine what a horrible thing it would have been for Jesus Christ to go through all that he went through, through his death and uh, suffering and death and burial and resurrection, and not one person chose to follow him? What a horrible thought that would be. So Jesus did it for us because he loves us and he needs us and wants us to be part of his kingdom. So if you're here this morning and you haven't made that decision for Christ, if you haven't repented and been baptized in his name, we don't have water in there, but we can get it. Hallelujah. And, and baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of your sins, as Acts 2.38 tells us. And you haven't received the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in what? Other tongues. Amen. The altar is open to you. Amen. We are victorious. Don't forget that. Who's, who's plunking? <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. The altar is open. You are at home. Find a church that believes in the book of Acts. Hallelujah. And is victorious. In this world we are in, it's not, it's, it's, it's not going to become better, is it? If we read Revelations, if we read End Times, it's, it's not going to be a pleasant time in the future. But I'm still victorious. Hallelujah. Altar is open. Hallelujah.